We work so you can play. Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com with Jay from MiniWarGaming.com. Look at that. I guess it would just be Matt and Jay from... Anyway, yeah. we're going to start a new series of videos here where we're going to talk about the new Tyranid Codex. Mm -hmm. Now, when it first came out, Jay and I sat together. Because Jay plays Tyranids yeah. too. That's why he's included yeah. in this conversation. Uh, so it's not just a hypothetical theoretical no, no. kind of thing. It's, it's practical, very practical. We did a review when the Codex first came out to give you our initial thoughts. But really, you can't judge a Codex when it first comes out. You can't look at it and really know if it's better or worse mm. or how it's going to play until you actually play it. Because uh, all the theory crafting in the world doesn't matter until you actually put it to practice and see what works. And it's always interesting to find out what actually does work. Yeah. So this series of videos is going to have a couple of purposes. One, we're going to start off by reviewing the Codex and what we think about it now. And then it's going to become a series of videos talking about the different units, uh, our experiences mm -hmm. and games, and overall tactics. So we're actually going to cover Tactica here, because between the yep. two of us, we've played a couple dozen games, yep. roughly. And, and it, all, on all sorts of different um, armies we played against Eldar, Chaos, Demons, uh, Chaos Space Marines, Space Marines, Necrons. What have you played against? Uh, Space Marines, Necrons, Dark Angels, Dark Angels. Uh, Tau and Eldar, Tau Sisters and Eldar. of Battle. Sisters of Battle. Okay, great. So we got a good smattering mm -hmm. of, of kind of the different play styles that you can have. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, the two of us combined don't have years and years and years experience of the new Tyranids. I've mm -hmm. been playing Tyranids for years. You've been yep. playing them for years as well. So hopefully that'll, that'll be enough mm -hmm. that we can give you a really good idea. It's not necessarily a review of should you play Tyranids. It's more just what we think about the changes and all, yeah. all that. And then we're going to go into, like I said, tactics and our experiences. So this first video is a review of the Codex now that we have experienced it. Yes. So we're going to go through it. Uh, these videos are going to range in length. Some of them will be long, some of them will be short. However, if you want the access to all of them, I am going to put half of them in the vault. So the vault members will have access to more Tactica and more of our reviews and opinions and all of that. And so if you are not a vault member, of course, you can join for free by clicking on the link below to the next one in the, in the series and uh, you get a seven day free trial and you can try it out and hopefully you'll like it and get even more battle reports, because especially if you like Tyranids or want to learn how to fight against Tyranids. Mm -hmm. um, I play Tyranids a lot. Jay plays Tyranids sometimes in his battle reports. And uh, so there's even more of those in the vault. And of course, there's the post-game discussions mm -hmm. and tactics and all of that. So definitely go and check it out. It supports us, allows us to make the videos that we make. Without vault members, we would not be able to do it because, uh, as I said before, the advertising revenue that we get from like, YouTube is not enough by far to allow us to run this company. So end advertisement for the vault right there. So review. Let's go over the different parts. We kind of went over the different parts. Let's do it again. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little quicker in some areas, maybe a little longer yeah. in some areas. So what are your impressions overall All right, compared uh, to your initial impressions? All right. I am slightly more positive. Um, I was pretty down this codex when it first came out. Now, a lot of things I predicted did come true. Uh, playing in certain armies, I knew the feel that it would be against. Like certain armies we just can't keep up with. Um, things do work better. Obviously, Venom Thropes to me once we realized that it, when we first read it, we thought it only gave it to the, the individual the models. models. Yeah. And now, if, if what we've read is correct, and now if, you, if a single model has it, the entire squad gets it, actually is quite powerful. Um, but in the end, I'm a little disappointed on it, the amount of weapon skill and ballistic skill 3. You know, I find we're below average in shooting, and we're below average in assault. So there's nothing really to... To, you know, set now, the weapon apart. skill and blessed skill were typically three in Tyranids before. But even the, the Carn Carnifex, Carnifex yeah. was weapon skill I know, three but before. I think we should have been up to four. And even Old One-Eye is three. Mm -hmm. And Old One-Eye, who is the, the beast in close combat, should be able to hit orcs. Yeah, it is, it is frustrating with him because he gets the extra attacks, mm -hmm. but you have to hit in order to exactly. do it. Exactly. And so when you're rolling fours to hit, like it used to help you it, when in like old, old Tyranids, you could bring the gene stealers with their... Uh, feeder tendrils and give everything nearby preferred enemy and that was kind of your way around that because then they got re-rolls which is essentially giving them a yeah. 2.5 up which is really nice but and on top of that they also took away some of the things that made close combat good for the Tyranids such as sighting talents so re-rolling the ones re the that ones. made up for the weapon skill or with being... the Trigon Primes or Trigons for example re-roll everything yes and that really helps but now like uh, now, Trigons have a higher weapon skill so yeah. but Hormagons for example weapon skill 3 
They do go at initiative five, but weapon skill three and no rerolls anymore. So they're hitting everything pretty much on fours. Yeah. No reroll. It just it's a. They're not really good at shooting, and they're not really good at assault. They're kind of middle ground in everything. Now, how have your experiences been in the actual games that you've played? As this is not, now that you've gone through, mm -hmm. are you finding that they're not hitting enough? Yes. So yes. They're, um, they're doing less than what you would expect them to be able to do. Yes, especially with the armies. Uh, as, as said, especially with squads of hormigons. Hormigons were always my favorite because they were the close combat monsters. You give them toxin sacks, run them at your opponent, and have fun. You know, you hit on threes. I'm sorry, hit on fours. Re rolling your ones, so that gave you enough of a re roll. And on fours. And then we on fours. Yeah. I just find they're not hitting enough to now do the damage that I need them to do after they're being mowed down line by line until they get there, and then when they finally hit, it's not. So what are the things that you've you've liked about it then? Like yeah, obviously this, there's those things that you didn't like. Are there any things in particular that stand out to you as being yes, this is a definite improvement? In this Molochs game? are fun. <laughs> I think they're hilariously fun. Now. They're so they're so hit and miss. Yes, I know, but they're but so. But when much they fun. hit, yeah. holy cow, do they hit? Yeah. Have you seen some of my battle reports? It's like two Molochs, miss, miss, yeah. miss. Wham, 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 wham. It's like holy cow, look at all the stuff they just killed. Exactly. Totally made up for because they're so cheap. So cheap. Like 140 man. points, something mm -hmm. like that. Like that's cheap. Like when you come to a monstrous creature, they're totally useless otherwise. Yes. They they can't shoot. They does no shooting, and <laughs> close combat three attacks. Weapon, weapon skill, skill three. three. Strength six, monstrous creature, but. But you, you're just never hitting anything. No, um, I really like their attacks. Um, other than you know a couple of the monster creatures, obviously Venom Thropes to me have been amazing. Uh, the, yes. the synergy, I do find that now the best strategy is to simply put all your guys in one giant blob Venom and move them. In the middle. Venom Thropes in the middle I've or in the back. A couple times. Uh, depending on where they are, and run them at your opponent, and hopefully they get because I find the Tyranids now are really good in short range. 12 to 18 inches is where you need to be at all times because um, the guns that are longer than 18 inches range, I don't find, I, other than uh, Hive Guard are still pretty good. And I think they have 24 inch range of their uh, their normal Impaler cannons. The regular ones. Yeah. The, the new weapons only 18 inches. Or only 18 inches. Other than that, I find like Twin Link Devourers are the way to go, or Devourers, I find myself spamming with Devourers, especially with Warriors. And uh, But them, you want to be within 18 inch range, so you gotta, you got to close the gap quickly with your opponent. It's true. It's true. Now, okay, that's that's kind of a, an overall feel of the codex. We are going to go into the mm -hmm. different aspects, like instinctive behavior and psychic stuff. But we'll, well, I want to kind of talk about for a second. What do you think about the new models they released? Like we have, we have the new hive grown mm -hmm. harp, hive crone, hive grown, uh, yeah, hive crone harpy kit. We've got the Haro specs and the exocrine yep. or exocrine, however you want to say it, kit. We got the new warrior kits that allow you to find like primes. And um, we got new guard, so we got new hive guard, mm -hmm. a new tyrant guard. Am I missing anything? I think that was all the basic new ones. That was, yeah, basically it. What do you think of the new kits? Um, the new kits. I think the warrior kit is going to be bought a lot. I think warriors are the kind of the new troops. No, no, I'm not talking about, we're not talking oh, about tactics. In general? We're Just talking to the looks. Oh, looks? How, how do you like the look oh, okay. of the new models? Um, my favorite mod, I do really like the way that the Exocrine Harrowspix kit. Uh, I like the look of it. Um, the... Yeah, there he is right there. He looks pretty I, awesome. I wasn't sold on him when I saw the picture of him because I'm like, that yeah. looks a little too chaosy for me. And it still does. Mm -hmm. But now that he's out and I, I'm looking at him, I'm like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and I do, I really do like the Harrowspec, no, the, the Flyer kit as well, the Hive Crone, and uh, the Harpy kit. I do find it looks a little bit like a kit bashed kit of the olden days. Like, it looks very close to what people used to put together. Right, like if they were to grab a Carnifex and some Carnifex, wings. the wings within the Hive Tyrant, and yeah, because so they actually are pretty much the same they're wings. They're very similar, so slightly larger. Yeah, okay, so they've redone, yeah, they redid the wings, you know, but they are the same style, which they should be, mm -hmm. of course, because same army. To me, it does it does fit in quite well. Yeah. Uh, the look of the kits is good, and then for the warriors, the the big addition was the addition of bone swords and lash whips. Yes, which you could only buy fine cast wise, and exactly, I like plastic. Kit yourself, I, I, yeah, I prefer it. Me, I love all the new models. Um, like play-wise, they're a little different, but I love the new Hive Guard. They feel like they're toughness six now, mm -hmm. because if they've always been toughness six, but they're, they were so they would surprise people. They're like, I'm shooting my stuff. Okay, they're toughness six. They're like, what? Really? Yeah. Like these are toughness six, but now they are bigger and bulkier. Mm -hmm. The the Tyrant Guard always looked stupid before, and now I think I, they're they're interesting. This little whole ear flap thing—that's what it looks like. It's their shoulder pads. 
uh, it looks more like a wall. And at first I wasn't convinced by that, but now that I see them, just the mm. presence they have on the, on the table yeah. is quite horrifying. Yeah, and I've, I've always been a big fan of the plastic kits. GW, if they do something right, it's usually the plastic kits. Yeah. Um, I have the old metal hive guard and the old metal tyrant guard, and they're just so front heavy that yeah, they, just, they fall over and chip every time you use them. Yeah, the zone throats would do that, lictors mm -hmm. would do that. Everything's just so pointy. Uh, yeah, especially and, venom and you have slow. And you have your, your sand tables that are just, they're sandpaper. They're basically yeah. made to take the paint off of your metal models. So no, I definitely, uh, I'm a big fan of all the new stuff, mm -hmm. especially the warrior kit. I'm, now that I have warriors with bone swords, I just, I, I, and I've played them a couple times and I really enjoyed them, so that kind of helps too. Mm -hmm. But I, just, I think they look fantastic. Yep. Uh, now that I'm getting used to over the years to how the Tyranids look. Like I'm not a big fan of the Tyranid look overall. Their lore is fantastic. Absolutely love their mm -hmm. lore. Absolutely. Like they, if I could combine the look of the Zerg from Starcraft, <laughs> With the lore, lore yeah. of the Tyranids, that would be the perfect biological enemy race that mm -hmm. I could ever imagine. Because the Zerg to me have silly lore. It's just silly. I, I like Star. I love Starcraft. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But the way that Zerg look, like they have a reason for firing their weapons more than look. It kind of looks like we're holding a gun. Um, they're more like we're shooting at. We're like mm -hmm. shooting spikes from our back, or we're hucking out things, or we're shooting slime, or. Whatever happens to be, like the roaches are like spitting on you, and yeah, the weapons are much more like bionic. They're, they're parts of their bodies, kind of things. So yeah, that, and they, these are technically yeah. parts of their bodies, yeah. and these swords are yeah. even organisms. But it's like, come on, they can evolve things that doesn't require them to be holding the swords like humans. Yeah. And it's it's I know why it's like this. It's because they designed them back in like the eighties. Yeah, and back then this was the cool look. It looks like the aliens from uh, well, from Alien, mm -hmm. uh, or you got your Starship Troopers kind of thing. Like it, it, all those Starship Troopers actually have the more the Zerg look and everything being mm -hmm. close combat and just and talons and stuff. So so I know why it's still like that, and it's and it's grown on me, and so now I can look at it and really enjoy them. And supposedly they're not. People keep saying they're not bugs. They're supposed to be dinosaur equivalents. I keep hearing that in the comments section of your videos. I don't know if it's true, but people keep saying that. According to GW, they're not supposed to be bugs, they're supposed to be dinosaurs. Well, I think because of the whole hive thing. Oh. You don't typically look at dinosaurs as a hive. Now, That's true. Right? Like they're ants or bees, those are all hives. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they call them hives, yeah. it's kind of a hive fleet. That kind of, and they, they swarm. They swarm. Like dinosaurs don't swarm, they, they chomp. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I like the new models. Yeah. So, so going back to the codex, let's talk about a couple more things before mm. we finish this video, and then yeah. we'll move on and make some other ones. Um, there's, let's see, we wanted to talk about instinctive behavior. So now that we've done instinctive behavior, uh, obviously it's become harder for the Tyranids. Like, yes. I think we can all agree, no matter what your opinion is on anything, that now instinctive behavior has become even more key to Tyranids. I, how, how are you finding... now? How are you finding it's working out in the games for you? I don't find it actually makes a difference because, you know, here's the reason because, um, now when I'm creating my lists, I'm anticipating the instinctive behaviors. So now I'm designing my list to avoid the ones that I really want to avoid, and so they don't end up factoring. As I said, for troops, I'm now going with warriors, because with warriors, you never, never have to worry about instinctive about behavior. Um, or the, the monstrous creatures, a lot of them are fearless, and it, it ignores the bad things, usually, yeah. typically. And, or, Although, you know, if you bring Carnifexes with Twitting Devourers, and they fail their instinctive behavior, they're not going to be able to shoot. No. And that's a big deal. That is a big that's deal. 12 shots, twin length, strength six, that are that, not going to hit. Exactly. Um, which, as I mentioned, I just keep I just keep all one giant blob of synapse and go. Um, I do find that your opponent really does now just try to, to pick off your synapse creatures. The ones that know what they're doing. The ones that know what they're doing, yes. And, but luckily, if your warriors are the synapse creatures, they have to kill your, your warriors. And yeah, to me, it now feels like warriors are a must-include. Like, even if all you do is include two min groups of three warriors mm -hmm. unupgraded to do nothing else, but just kind of... Because three warriors, two groups of three warriors provide a very large bubble. And on top of that, what I've, I've found has been really good is taking a Tyranid Prime and attaching him to a squad because the Tyranid Prime is the only independent character HQ that we have. Mm -hmm. So you can give him the relic or uh, you can give him the relic that gives him an 18 inch synapse bubble, stick him in a squad of like six warriors in front of him, and then he can provide a good range for almost yeah, the entire everybody. field himself. Now, we'll, we'll talk more about tactics for yeah, to behavior exactly. later. So I, I more want to just talk about the uh, overall feel. Yeah. So I'm, we're going to probably dedicate an entire video to how to deal with instinctive yeah. behavior. I have yet to, ha I've yet to have. Oh, I've I've rolled out instinctive behavior several times with Hive Guard, and they just run into the nearest 
uh, one time they've fallen back, I think, and then one time well, it's they... It's 50-50 chance they yeah. fall back, right? And uh, and then besides that, my hormigons, I've never let them get out of synapse because I'm afraid that they'll eat <sighs> themselves. It happened once to me. And boy, was that a massacre. It just, they just, rah, they just ate themselves. There, there has been a lot of debate online whether or not if they have toxin sacs, they have to re-roll against themselves to wound. No, of but, course not. But look, look, look. I think it just says I don't. I don't know why people add rules. I don't know. Like, just read what it says. It says they suffer a number of hits equal to the number of models. And then these hits are resolved using the unit's majority strength and exactly. AP nothing. It doesn't say anything about them hitting themselves with their best close combat weapons. It just says they take a number of hits mm -hmm. equal to how many models there are resolved at their majority strength. That's exactly. It. So you wound yourself on fours, and then and you take your six up save. Six up save. So half of them are going to die. Yeah. Which, trust me, it happened. It is gone. Current effect is not as big a deal um, because you get three, basically three two plus. It, it can it can finish off the current effects. Um, but mm -hmm. it, it just really sucks that they don't do anything after that. Yeah. I find for me instinctive behavior. I enjoy instinctive behavior with Tyrannus because it provides a very interesting tactical element that I think a lot of other armies lack. Like you have your commanders and all the other armies, yep. but usually it doesn't matter that they're nearby. Like, I know there's some warlord traits, but we won't even mm -hmm. get into that because yeah. they're usually garbage. But I mean, like, um, when you're playing fantasy, for example, mm -hmm. not, I'm not a big fantasy fan, but one thing they do well is the whole general leadership thing and mm -hmm. their battle standard bears. If you're within 12 inches, you get that re-roll to your leadership, and that's a big deal. And I know there's some armies that provide that kind of stuff, yeah. but it feels to me like it should be a more general rule. Not to the extent that, of Tyrion is where if you don't have a commander nearby, you fall into dis disarray. But uh, it, it basically represents the, the, mm -hmm. the commander on the battlefield directing his troops, and when he dies, that causes panic amongst the rest of the troops. And I like that. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy that. Now, it's worked against me, but because I enjoy the, way, the, the idea behind it, it seems to make sense. What I don't enjoy is having to look up the tables. Yes. And I know eventually I will remember them. But this just got, like, it went from being... Like I, I know it was it was it was a couple of pages or it was a page to talk about it anyways, but it was very simple. There was two types, yep. and if you were out when you're feed, you got rage and, and had you to ran at your opponent, and you had to go. Well, actually, no, you didn't have to. Like oh. rage made oh, that's you right. run yeah. Yeah. in fifth edition, yeah. but it just basically gave you rage and you mm -hmm. couldn't shoot. And if you were lurking, then you had to shoot the nearest opponent, yep. and you had to go towards the nearest cover. Like it was pretty straightforward. And now all of a sudden you got to roll on tables. It's not that I don't. It's not even a matter of balance within the tables. It's just the fact that you have to roll on more tables, and you got to look up things and have those access to all those. And so it's more bookkeeping. I yeah. just I don't enjoy. And that. on top of that, you have to remember the rules of the models that specifically pertain to that. Yeah, I forget that. if they're hunt or lurk. First, it's usually obvious yeah. if they're feed. Like if they're a close combat beast, mm -hmm. then they're usually feed. But um, and then I never remember which ones are lurk and which yeah. ones are hunt. And then you have to look at the squad and go, are they fearless? I think they're, oh, yeah, this one is fearless, so then you skip to the next one. Yes. Five actually goes to six, and then, you know. Yeah, yeah, you have to, there's just so much just to figure out something very straightforward. So I wish that they didn't have that. Um, the feeding where they all kind of kill each other, it doesn't actually make sense fluff-wise. Mm -mm. Like Hormigants, if you take them out of synapse, they don't start to kill each other. No. They will charge the nearest enemy and give them some sort of other disadvantage. Like, the fact that they have to charge a nearest enemy is already a disadvantage, but you could work your way around that. So give them some other disadvantage, like, like they're disarrayed, so it's always a disorderly charge or something Or a like weapon that. skill initiative one. Yeah, yeah, something you like know. that. Because Hormigants are, are instinctively very vicious creatures. So yep. why would they all of a sudden start killing themselves when fluff-wise it makes more sense? So, you know, that's more a fluff thing, though, mm -hmm. but I just don't like the fact that there's tables. And you got to look them up every single time. It just it kind of takes you out of the game, yep. forces you to look it up, you roll, and you're like, oh, that's crappy. <laughs> and then and then you move on, um, and so it's just too bad. Like all this, like if you roll the six, you actually get something good. It's just like why? Who cares? Like make it good or make it bad. Like you're out, you're bad. It's bad. It's so you roll. If you fail your leadership, then boom, you've got an effect yeah. on you, and that's it. And, and I understand they had to change it because rage became a good rage thing. became good. Yeah, and you actually try to get your hormigons out of synapse, have them charge in, and then have a synapse creature charge so he gets within. So they got rage from the charge. Yeah. And then, and, and then it, but, but now they're fearless. Yeah. So there was always those tricks, but that was more of an addition than the main yeah. uh, book change. Um, I don't want to get into everything because. Did, uh, just a question then, uh, along the lines is Did you find any of the bio artifacts useful? Well, the one that gives you the Norn crown, mm -hmm. the one that gives you plus six synapse, that's always good. Um, the, I tried, somebody gave me the idea to outflank a Turbagon 
with the miasma thing. And that, because now you spawn gaunts at the end yep. of the movement, so they can actually spawn when they come on. And I tried, and so you bring a high tyrant with hive commander, you get to outflank a troop choice, you make sure you bring a turbogon as yep. a troop choice, so you have to have 30 turbogons. And you give him the miasma thing and electroshock grubs or something. Yep. Actually, he already has his spikes. So he gets to come on, shoot a couple weapons, uh, which are half decent, mm -hmm. and then spawn turbogons. Yep. So I found that that was actually interesting. So yeah, there's, there's. Yep. Not all of them are useful, but there's... Ingarl factor can be useful in certain circumstances. But I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't played around with that one yet. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's, it's more like because there's so many different um, things that can take it, yeah. that certain ones are going to be awesome for certain things. Like maybe the Ingarl factor on a Trigon Prime will be really good. Maybe. Maybe. I, yeah, maybe on a Hive Tyrant as well, because then you can possibly avoid... It depends on the army you're facing. But if you're against force weapons, you can drop them down to armor 2. And yeah. so he'll be avoiding the force weapons. Yeah, the three plus. That goes three. Yeah, there's there's things you can do like yeah. that. So, I, yeah, I think they're interesting. The more I don't have a problem. I, I was talking to Dave about this yesterday, and I was looking at his Chaos Space Marine Codex. He's like, "This sucks. This sucks. This sucks." All these different icons yeah. that they could take. I'm like, "Yeah, those suck for competitive." But I like the more they can provide in diversity, mm -hmm. then you can find those little things and surprise your opponent, or just for fun and try out different things. So I like the diversity yeah. of that. So I like them. I would say. They're, they're kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Like, why are there bio they artifacts? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously? Fluffwise like, makes some sense. Like, once you're done, they just melt everybody down, and like, maybe it, there's, there's more to it than that, but... So why do they have artifacts? But who yeah. cares? So as long as they don't turn them like the Zerg and start giving them personalities and... That's true. No, no, no communication. <laughs> We're just food, all right? Just, just let them try to eat us. Um, Warlord traits. Yeah. They're like regular Warlord traits. They're hit and miss. You roll some good ones, you roll some bad ones. You know, Synactic Lynchpin I find is the most handy because well, it's yeah. 18 inch range. Yeah, especially if they have the Norn Crown. Mm. And then you can give them Dominion. So they could have a 30 inch Synapse. That's actually happened. I had that one game. Wow. I gave the guy a Norn Crown. I rolled um, the Synaptic Lynchpinch. Lynchpin. Lynchpinch. <laughs> and then he had Dominion because you can always give him yep. Dominion. And it was like, bah, 30 inch. He died in the second round. Oh, yeah. But still, <laughs> if, until then, there was nowhere on the board that couldn't have it. So we look at through the different models. We've already given a review of them. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, yeah, okay, let's, yeah, sure, let's talk about the weapon changes. Um, Close combat pretty much got worse. All of them across the board got slightly worse. In some ways. In some ways they got better. I, like Rending Claws having AP5, that everybody reminded me of in my one battle report where I gave the Scarab Swarms their 5 plus saves. Like, that's good. Yeah. That actually would have been really useful yeah. in that game. But I, I found Lash Whips are now counterintuitive. Why do they increase your initiative rather than decrease the, your I opponents? know, because that's a utility thing. They were always utility. Yeah. You get the one guy with Lash Whips in there, and then everybody else gets Pumbles the them, advantage. Yeah. And I really don't like that yet. Yeah. Give me plus three initiative, yeah, that's fine. But you're already giving it to the Hive Tyrant, who already has initiative of five. Yeah. Now you make it eight. Yeah, sure, now he'll hit faster than so everything. And then same with Scything Talons, they're, they remove, they're AP6 now. AP6. But, mm -hmm. but I prefer the rerolls to hit, no AP. Yeah. And then uh, Crushing Claws as well. Crushing Claws... Well, now they're plus one strength. Yeah. Which I actually do like. The plus D3 hits was nicer. Yeah. But if you're going to change it, plus one strength is nice. Because you give him two Carnifex, and all of a sudden he's mm -hmm. strength 10 base. Now, you don't have to give it to him because you can just give him Adrenal Glands. So those upgrades are nice. Mm -hmm. Some of the changes there, like Adrenal Glands giving you Furious Charge and Fleet. And Fleet, yeah. I keep forgetting nice. about the Fleet part. Yeah, you give it to a Hive Tyrant with wings, and all of a sudden he can reroll his runs, his mm -hmm. 2d6 runs. You give it to Carnifexes. They're like an auto-include for Carnifexes now. And all of a sudden, because they are always crappy at charging, because yep. they, they would always fail it. And now they get a reroll, so it's hard to fail when you get rerolls. And, and Fleet for running. Mm -hmm. And Furious Charge, so the Strength 10 on a charge. And so. uh, the Bone Swords, now they're instant death on a 6. Yep. When they used to be leadership checks, so against like normal... Leadership 10 guys, it really doesn't change much because there's basically a 1 in 6 chance of them failing anyway of a leadership check. Yeah, 3 out of 36. It's 1 out of 12 chance of 12. them failing. So it's a double, you've doubled yeah, your chance. Doubled the chances, right? And, but versus the versus lower toughness well, guys. Right, I guess, like, yeah, because it's 1 out of 6. Yeah. As opposed to, well, yeah, yeah. Sorry, but versus better. the lower leadership guys, it's actually quite the nerf. It could be because, you know, if you're leadership 7, it was a 50 50 chance then, of failing. But then I could counter that by saying a lot of lower leadership guys don't need to be insta killed. That's true. Because yeah. your higher leadership guys are the bigger yeah. guys. And most of them are 10. Yeah, or 8 or 9. 8 or 9, yeah. For Space Marines and stuff. So, I like it. Yeah. It's, it's a simple, I think, I like it as a simpler way, because everybody always made their leadership check, mm -hmm. and it just kind of made it feel useless. 
Uh, like, yeah, double bone sword was good because it forced him on 3d6, I believe. Yep. It was what it used to be. Now, double bone sword is just double bone sword. It's just a cheaper version of the bone sword lash whip. Yeah, exactly. Which, you know, I like. As you can see, I have a lot of double bone sword guys. So yeah, so those are interesting. All the, the, the ranged weapons didn't really change that much. Spore mines got a huge change, and mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I love spore mines now. They're so much fun. Totally, they're not. Yeah. They're not competitive, but they're fun. Yeah. Like if you've got a couple fast attack slots available, just fill it up with spore mines because they're five points a piece, and they mess with your opponent so bad. The I love it. Oh, I love yeah. it. I love it. And lictors allowing them to come in within six inches without scattering, and they're like, "Ah, oh, spore mines! Like, do you waste your shots at me, or do you let me charge you and blow up and strike nine? It's like it's just oh, they're so good. I like. I, I, I have always wanted to be able to play with spore mines, but they were they were ten points a piece before. Yeah. I was like, why would I ever bring them? They're just, even when I play just for fun, I don't want to bring them because just, if they fill up this, they're just useless. Mm -hmm. You get to deploy them and they move randomly. Now they're actually pretty cool. And, and um, yeah, so, so I did enjoy that. Other than that, we got our like, new weapons and stuff, and they're fine. Uh, the new weapons in the Hive Guard, uh, fine. They, they have their use. The, the new, like the Hive Crone and his weapons, they're good. Um, I don't think there's anything fantastically awesome in all the new stuff. Stats-wise? Um, other than the, the extra crin shot isn't bad, I find. the, the I have, I've used him a few times, and I've yet know. to see him do he, much. But compare, the problem is he's in the heavies, and the heavies have Carnifexes, and they have Molochs to me, which are the two that I always, like, oh, now i got to see how many I can take. If you could bring extra crines in squads, mm -hmm. that, then to me, would it. make them worth it. Because it's like, do I have one? Because it's not even a points cost. Their major cost is the slot. Yeah, exactly. And, and thankfully, the Haro specs are elite. Um, so if you really wanted to do both, you could. But although the elite slots are also expensive because mm -hmm. you have your hive guard and your zone thropes and, and your venom thropes. So the elite and heavy seems to be the the champions. Yeah. With a little bit of help from troops, fast attack seems to be pretty weak. Yeah. And HQ of course is good. You got your hive tyrants. You got your trigon primes or I'm uh, sorry, tyranid primes, which mm -hmm. I actually really like now. So overall, I have to say that I've really enjoyed. The, the now that I've played a bunch of games with them, I'm actually really enjoying. The, the change of pace and how they play, and um, and just the way they play. I'm actually liking it. Oh. I hate Turbogons now, but that's okay. Yeah, they're frustrating. Yeah, but overall I like it. So my overall, like if I was to compare it to the old one, I'd, I'd give them like a good 75% out of 100, because obviously it's percent. I'd give 65 to 70. Six, okay, that high. Yeah. Eh? Not, as I said, it's not terrible. The problem is the internal balance is not good. I just find there's like. But what each codex slot. has good internal balance? That's well, I find a couple of the new, the sixth edition ones. I would say like the Space Marines. There's a lot of good combinations for Space Marines, and there's a lot of good combinations for Eldar, and uh, even Tau have some great combinations. There's a, a variety of lists I've run up against that can be fun and that can be competitive, and uh, they're all good externally balanced and internally balanced. And this one I find is not either of them. Hmm. Yeah. I can, I can agree that it's not internally balanced. Yeah. I guess just when I, when I, I'm the kind of person that when I look at Games Workshop's games, as soon as we start talking about balance, yeah, it goes I'm just like, meh. Uh, yeah. Okay, you've lost me because we're not playing War Machine here. Playing no. War Machine, we can talk about balance. You play mm -hmm. 40K, you don't talk about balance. You talk about the cool armies, mm -hmm. like this, this, the, the campaign that we're doing, Necron and Tyranid campaign that's been coming out, um, that you've been seeing. That has been the most fun I've had with any war game ever. Oh, good. And it's because the 40k universe and models, because you, you, they're large armies. Like, look at this. This is already bigger than what other game. This is not even like a full army. No. And what other game has this much? Exactly. You play any other. And I love those other. I love Infinity. I love War Machine. Except Fantasy, but that's a Games Workshop game too. Um, you just you don't play with this many models that have such dynamic like look at the size differences And this is just the medium and large. I don't even have the small guys I got a big box of mm -hmm. hormigons right here I could spread out all amongst them and it looks so cool. Yeah, like that is what's that to me That's a draw 40k mm -hmm. and so a codex when it comes out needs to give you the tools to have fun And this one does that enough. Yeah, I would say that's why I give it 75% I wish the new models were a little more useful. Yeah, I wish that um, they didn't nerf the Turbogon so bad. I wish they didn't have to remove the things they removed. I know why they did, or at yeah. least I have my theories. We have as to. theories, yeah. Yeah, because th of the chapter house thing. But overall, I say it was an adequate update now that I've had a chance. And I'm glad that I'm saying that now because when I first looked at it, I was really depressed. I looked at it and I was like, oh, you're ruining it for me. I'm not going to want to play Tyranids anymore. Mm -hmm. 
I've done the same thing, but we'll talk about more. Yeah, more. we'll talk about more. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more in the series. Of course, you can click the link to go to the next video, and you can see what it is down there. I'll have the title and the link and everything. This is Matthew and Jay from AnyWarGaming.com. Happy Wargaming.